Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks to Polestar NY asking a very difficult question for me to answer. Will Volvo eventually buy out Polestar? It's a very good question. I think this happens perhaps under one circumstance and that's if the Polestar brand isn't doing well anymore. But truth to be told, I don't think this will happen because Volvo cars, they have a very distinctive concept, very distinctive idea. You see, Volvo cars are not necessarily Mercedes or BMW competitors or even Aldi competitors. Volvo cars have always been in their own niche, within their own corner. They've always done something different from other automakers and they've been quite successful at what they do. But they're not known for having the fastest cars. They're not known for having the prettiest cars. They're not even known for having the, the most luxurious car. However, in recent years, the Volvo vehicles have been very, very much quite modern and nice and luxury compared to like an Aldi. But it's never been like that Mercedes competitor, that BMW competitor, that Porsche competitor. No, this is why they created Polestar, its own brand, something that could focus fully on luxury. That's what Polestar is. It's a fully premium, luxurious brand. It's specifically there for Porsche customers. Those customers that would buy a Porsche, a Aldi, a Mercedes, a BMW, Polestar is there to take those customers because a lot of those customers, they wouldn't necessarily buy a Volvo like 10 years ago because maybe it's not fast enough, maybe you're not sporty enough, maybe it doesn't look nice enough. So Volvo wants to continue doing Volvo things. And Volvo understands there's this other side of the luxury market that wants fast cars, prettier cars, more luxurious cars. And that's where Polestar comes in. And so far, the Polestar 1, very luxurious car. Uh, Polestar 2, interior, very luxurious. Compare that car to the Tesla Model 3, Model Y. Interior-wise, I think the Polestar definitely wins. It's way more interesting and it was very comfortable. I've test drive one of those and it was brilliant. And the newer Polestar cars, they promise to be even more luxurious, more than the Polestar 2, more than the Polestar 1, because the Polestar 2 and the Polestar 1 are still very similar to Volvo cars. And while the Polestar 3 interior is very similar to a Volvo interior, in fact, a lot of the aesthetics is pure Volvo. The, a lot of the design is pure Volvo design, just changed a little bit and a bit more premium, a little bit more luxurious. But compare that with the EX90. The EX90 is extremely luxury and it looks, it's a beautiful car. Seriously, it's a beautiful car. But that's my point. So the purpose for Polestar is to compete with the luxury market. If Polestar seems to be doing great at that so far, 50,000 vehicles this year, they only have one vehicle available. They're adding, they're, the, the Polestar 3 will be starting manufacturing this year. The Polestar 4 is being debuted this year due to start manufacturing next year. It's 2024. The Polestar 5, due to come out next year, aims to start manufacturing probably in late 2024, maybe early 2025. Very exciting. Polestar 6, the Roadster, there to compete with the Tesla Roadster. The, the, the Porsche 911. Yeah. These are cars that Volvo would have never have created. In fact, some of these cars were Volvo cars like the render, the concept, the ideas, the Polestar 1 and Polestar 2 was Volvo designs. It was their ideas, but Volvo never created those cars. And eventually they find a perfect use for those cars, turn it into its own company and call it Polestar. Let's think back to why Elon Musk wanted to take Tesla private. It was because there's a lot of difficulty when making big decisions within the company. If the company is private and it's a small ownership, then it's easy to make those decisions because there's only a few people within the company you need to consult. There's only a few people who actually own part of the company that needs to be consulted. If it's a public company, it's a bit more, it's a bit more hassle. It's a bit more difficult. Public criticism as well. You know, there's a reason why McLaren is successful, but they're a private company. And you never hear McLaren in the news on, unless unless it's about their panel gaps. Apart from that, you don't hear about McLaren in the news because they're a private company and they still own their Formula One team, despite the fact that Mercedes wanted to buy it from them. 
but they can make big decisions within their company and they're not affected by it in the public because the public is not concerned with what they do and the public doesn't really buy McLaren. It's few rich people who buy McLaren. The average person, we don't buy McLaren, so we don't really care what they're doing within their company. When you take a company public, that's kind of the process. We begin to care less what happens in the company because we're not personally invested. We're not personally affected. What's the least we can do? If they, don't, if they do something we don't like, we buy another electric car. If, if Tesla goes public, if Polestar goes public, they don't do something we like, we buy another electric car. But we're not going to necessarily go on Twitter and start a Twitter war if they do something we don't like because the, the thing is that we're not invested anymore. We're not affected anymore. Im immediately, we lose interest and over time, we lose that passion to fight for the company and to try to change things because we're not invested anymore. It's not our company anymore. When you own a percentage of a company, even just one share, that's your company. You're part of that company. You're, you're part owner. No matter how small, you're still a part owner. It's like owning a business. So when you don't own it anymore, it does affect a lot of things. So far, Polestar, very successful. And it looks like that's only going to intensify over the next five to 10 years. Polestar will only get bigger, more popular, and the demand will grow. Premium, luxury, EV, and they're already creating a name for themselves. You know, just today, I was listening to MKBHB uh, podcast. It's called Waveform. And he was talking about the Polestar 2 2024 version, the new version with the facelift. And he said something that I really found strange and enlightening, but happy to hear. Something that I didn't know. And that was that Polestar, the Polestar 2, is on his top four list of his favorite EVs. His first favorite EV is the, is the Tesla Model S. His second Porsche Taycan. Um, his, his third is probably the Rivian R1T or something like that. The pickup truck, I believe. And his, his fourth and his fourth company, his fourth favorite company was the Polestar 2. I was so shocked because he's never reviewed this car on his, on his, on his channels. He's never reviewed a Polestar. But within the podcast, he was speaking like he did review a Polestar. So I'm thinking, where is the video, MKBHB? Where is the video? I, I want to I see that video because I've test drive that car. I would love to hear a second opinion. And, you know, he said that the car drives very similar to uh, a Tesla Model Y, like a crossover SUV, you know? And you have to remember the, the, the Polestar is, the car is raised. It is raised because tr it was a ICU traditional car. And the, the body, the chassis, it was transformed into an electric car. So they had to raise the ride heights to put batteries in the belly of the car. So naturally, the design is a, is a little bit different. And, and the way it drive is also a little bit different. So for instance, the Polestar, Polestar 5, that sports sedan SUV, that's going to drive more like a Model S, in my opinion. Because the when I drove the Polestar... Uh, I could I could go around corners and I could feel the yes it had downforce but at the time it was a very strange sensation to the the downforce that sucks you to the to the ground I felt that in the in the Tesla Model 3 I'm guessing the Tesla Model S is quite similar but cars that are a bit higher off the ground like a Model Y an SUV or a Polestar 2 there you're going to feel the downforce but you'll also feel like the car is is higher off the ground like an airplane you're gonna feel like it's it's acting almost like an airplane like it drives almost like an suv like it it's actually it's fully off the ground it's not low to the ground and it's not sucking the air down to the ground you know it's it drives a bit different but nevertheless it still drive really good and i feel i still felt a lot of downforce a crazy amount and something that he added as well which was a real compliment for for polestar is that the numbers for Polestar 2 vehicles, they're typically, they're, they're not the most impressive, but when he's driven the car, it's very nice. It's very sporty. It's like it's, it's better than the numbers. That was a really good compliment, seriously. And some of these clips, I need to post them on Twitter because you guys need to see this. He's the biggest tech YouTuber in the world and he's talking about Polestar. It's our favorite car brand. Let's reshare it on Twitter, seriously. I do believe it's it's within his, his latest podcast. I, I will get the clips and I'll share them on Twitter. 
but yeah that's that's very exciting but i just wanted to talk about the possibilities what if volvo did try to take polestar private and if they did would they still keep it as a separate company or would they just transfer all the cars back into volvo vehicles or will they just keep the polestar name but just take it off the stock market like for instance if the company is doing great in terms of sales brand recognition it's, it's doing great numbers in the next 10 15 years but they want to make bigger decisions in the company and because it's a public company that creates problem they might consider taking it private to make those big big decisions without having the 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 criticism or the the pullback from from us you know we're gonna have a if post I says they're gonna do something crazy and I don't like it I'm gonna be like no don't do that I'm invested it's not impossible it's not impossible it's not out of the question but it has to be the right circumstances for the right reason I think right now they don't really need to be a a, a, a private company especially because they're not trying to do anything crazy with the brand Polestar is not trying to be the next Tesla. They're trying to be the next Porsche. They're not trying to be the next Tesla and sell like 10 million cars a year or a million cars a year or 5 million. I don't even know if their ambition is to sell a million cars a year. That would be amazing, but I don't even know if that's their ambition. If it is, I think they can definitely do that. If they wanted to compete with Tesla, they really could, but they're choosing to compete with Porsche specifically, premium, luxury, branding is important in this area that's where they want to compete i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon i think that's we're a long way from that and they're doing great for now in terms of their vehicles the only thing is their their numbers the money they have available and the money they're burning through because they are burning through a lot of money but i remember time when Tesla was also burning through a lot of money and people were saying this is never going to work. This company will never succeed. It will fail eventually. They'll run out of money eventually. What you have to remember about Polestar is that they do have the support of Volvo to increase production, ramp up production, and it's not slowing down. Volvo and Geely wants to put more money into Polestar and to do more things. They're not slowing down. They're speeding up. They're going They're going full steam because they're seeing the potential of the brand. It's powerful. It's strong. They're, they're noticing that, hey, in 10, 20 years, this is going to pay off. This investment it will be worth it. That's what they're investing in. Volvo will become a full electric vehicle company by 2030. Polestar is already a full electric. Polestar is already a fully electric vehicle company, except for the first vehicle, the Polestar 1, which is a hybrid. But still, it's only a limited edition, 1,500. But listen, that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in our next video.